didn't even get to finish the question, man. So, um, what we're doing stuff like, for example, number uh, seven, for when we were doing significant digits, yep. do we do it based off of the only one we give, like, for example, 2.0 grams? Yeah. Or do we go off, like, our other measurements? For example, like, one kilogram would only have one significant. No, no, no. It's, it's just, let's just go off that two grams. Okay. And here's the deal with this. You're, kind of, you're, turning, you're determining the number of nickels, okay? You can't have, like, half a nickel. So it's just going to be, like, a whole number. But, yeah, I mean, your measured value, if you look at that, is like the two grams, because that's what you're going after. Okay. Because that's your that's your measure. All right. Yeah. That should. Be. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Number twelve, please. That's a good one. I like number twelve. Okay. Because so a number twelve. Let's kind of set the stage. Here's one meter. So here's what you want to look at. Let's say you read a problem like this and you completely flip out and you go, oh my god, I've got the faintest idea how to do this problem, okay? So don't panic, but just kind of think your way through it. Okay, so let, let, me, let me ask you this. Are hydrogen atoms pretty big or pretty small? Pretty small. They're pretty small, okay? They are pretty stinking small, right? Okay, For, so like when you take a sip of water, I mean, you're chugging down billions upon billions upon billions of little hydrogen atoms, okay? They're minuscule, okay? And that's okay, because if hydrogen atoms were like really big, rain would be completely different, okay? They're very, very tiny. We're made up of all these really, really weird particles we call atoms. So if I'm going to stack these side by side by side to equal length of one meter, do you think I'm going to take a, is it going to take a lot of hydrogen atoms or just a few hydrogen atoms? A lot. A lot. A lot. Why? Because they're small. Because they're small. So I'm going to, it's going to take a lot of them. Okay? Right? It's going to take a lot of these hydrogen atoms. So number one, I know my answer is going to be pretty big. Okay? Because I'm going to need a lot of hydrogen atoms. Now, here's the other thing that's subtle. What units do you want your answer to end up in? Atoms. Now, you've got a length that's in meters, right, of one meter. I've also given you the radius of <coughs> in meters. So you've got to figure, somehow or another, i got to get those meters to go away so that I just end up in atoms. So even if you don't know how to do it, start with this. You know you're going to have a really, really big answer, and you know you're going to have to end up in atoms. No meters, just atoms, okay? So, let's say you read the problem and think, oh, Perkamp, God, I don't know how to do this. Well, let's, let's, let's play the what-if game. What if the radius, okay, what if the radius of a hydrogen atom is 0.25 meters, okay? Matt, if the radius of the hydrogen atom is 0.25 meters, how many atoms would it take to equal one meter? <coughs> Uh, the radius is 0.25? Radius is 0.25. Four. No, two. Which one? Four or two? Two. Two. Yeah. Why? Uh, two is a much better answer. Because, uh, well, the radius is only half of the... The hole? The, yeah, half of the hole. Okay, half the hole. Right? So the entire thing, the diameter, would be another 0.25, right? So the diameter is 0.5 meters. Now, here's what's important. This is why you pay attention to the units. This is 0.5 meters per atom, right? This is the distance taken up by one atom. So. If you, if you follow Matt's thought process, what's one of the things you're going to have to do with the radius of that hydrogen atom? What are you going to do? Multiply it by? Two. To get the? Diameter. Which is the distance covered by each atom. Oh, okay. Okay, so let, let's start. Well, no one will have to do that. I don't do anything yet. This is to, let's kind of chill out. Now, how could I take, what mathematical operation could I do? Where I take one meter and I've got meters per atom. So what can I do to get rid of the meters and end up in atoms? Oh, 
I divide. So if I take my total length and divide that by the diameter, look what happens. So I get meters divided by meters per atom. Meters cancel out, the atoms flip up. Oh, how cool is this? Okay? So, if you can figure out this called the thought process or an algorithm. So if you, if you read a problem and you don't know how to do it with the numbers that you have, think through it and play the what if game. You go, okay, well if this is 0.25, okay, I double it to get the diameter. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go, oh, okay, I'm going to take the length and divide it by two times the radius. You're taking meters and you're dividing it by meters per atom. The meters cancel out and you're left with atoms. And you should get a really big number. Now, how many significant digits can your answer have on number 12? Three. Three. Okay? Your answer on number 12 shall only have three significant digits. Okay? Go with this. All right. Now, <laughs> during first block on number 15, hopefully this isn't true, uh, there, there were some folks that on 15, that they, they were doing the calculation on 15 with trig functions. They had left their calculator in radian mode, and they were getting a negative distance. Okay? Now, this is the class, and I had, we had some fun with it first block. I said, okay, let's look at this. All right? Because if you leave your radian, if you leave your calculator in radian mode, you get like the length of that side opposite to be like negative 2.37 meters. Okay? So let's just think about this. So if you look on number 15, here's this triangle, right? And the length of the hypotenuse is 2.4 meters. This is 30 degrees. So right away, why does it not make any sense to end up with like negative length? Because it can't. It just doesn't make any sense. What does it mean to have a negative length on a triangle? And then you think, well, I'll just ignore it. Okay, no. No. I mean, just look at this. this. The beauty of physics is that it's very visual. Okay, you can, you can sketch stuff out and see what's happening. If this is 2.4 meters, do you really think this side over here, even if you made it positive, would be 2.37 meters? No, because if that was the case, it'd be like, it would be like <laughs> this, okay? Like this would be 2.4 and that would be like 2.37, which is nowhere near a 30 degree angle. So this is a situation where your calculator will lie to you, but you feel a moral, I was appalled at the number of people that wrote down that answer in, in, in first block, okay? Oh, the answer is negative 2.37. You cannot trust your calculator as the oracle that you think it is, okay? You have to question what your calculator tells you. And again, your calculator won't care. Really. Trust me, it won't care. Okay. Now, word of caution. Let's talk about number five. So why was I a jerk, and I was, when I typed up number five? You had one in kilograms and one in grams. I've got one in kilograms and I've got one in grams. Okay? And probably what some of you might have done is that you blissfully saw two numbers, saw the word sum, and you just blissfully wrote or added those numbers in your calculator and you wrote down whatever your oracle says the answer is. Okay? You've got kilograms and you have grams. Why can you not add them together? It's not the same units. Same units. Now, <coughs> let's, let, I'm, I want to I point out one thing. Let's take the 12.6 grams, and let's say that we want to change that into kilograms, okay? 1,000 grams, 1 kilogram, okay? Now, 12.6, as it is written, has how many significant digits? Three. 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 Now, if I divide by 1,000, I get 0 0.0126 kilograms, all right? Does this have the same number of significant digits as this? Yes. Yes. Because yes. what are these zeros doing? Placeholding. Placeholding. Okay, taking up space. They're fresh, right? <laughs> That's all they're doing. These don't count. You don't start to count until you hit that one. So even though it's in kilograms, 
it has the same number of significant digits as it does as 12.6. Now, how is addition and subtraction handled differently than multiplication and division in significant digits? Least precision. Huh? Least precision. On which one? Addition, addition, and subtraction. Addition, addition, subtraction. So, why am I getting okay? So, so let's say that you've got 25, 20 point one, just making up a number, and we're going to add that to three point one four seven. Okay. So, don't look at this and go, oh, this has five significant digits. This has four significant digits. I have to have only four significant digits. When you're adding or subtracting, it is not the number of significant digits. It's about place value. So when in doubt, and I promise you, you're going to have to do problems like this on the test. I promise you. If you're not sure how to do this, go old school and stack these problems, ver stack these numbers vertically where you line up the decimal point. Find the least precise place value, add them together, round to that number. So if you're not sure what to do when you add or subtract, stack them, make them line up. Okay? Good with that. Anything else? Anything anybody else want me to do? Make sure, make sure, make sure that you are solid on number 14 on that conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second. Okay? Make sure that you are solid on that. The shortcut is you multiply by 10 and you divide by 36. Any time you convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second, because you're multiplying by 10 and then dividing by 36, your answer in meters per second is always going to be less than the numeric value in kilometers per hour. So when you change kilometers per hour to meters per second, your mathematical answer should be less than what you started with in kilometers per hour, because you're multiplying by 10 and you're dividing by 36. If you do that conversion and you get a bigger number than what you started with, something went horribly wrong. Okay? Once, twice, sold. At some point, get those handed in. So, Max, stop that for a bit. Okay. So, here's Max. God knows what this is going to be. Okay, so here's the drill. So what we've got is that we know how to do physics at this point. Okay, we know how to do dimensional analysis, we know how to measure things, we know how to graph things. We're cool. So now we need to start to roll that into some more advanced stuff. So the next unit is going to be velocity. The unit after that is acceleration, which is a change in velocity. And then you're going to do forces, which is force equals mass times acceleration. So you got to do velocity so you can figure out how it changes, which is acceleration, and then you got to be able to calculate acceleration to do forces because F equals MA. So that's why you have to go in this sequence. So it's kind of a, a, a segue between what we've been doing and what we're going to do. Let's talk about some different velocities. So we're going to go out in the hallway and we're going to time max. Okay, We'll get to max's velocity in just a second. Because here's the problem. You all are used to thinking about velocities in terms of like miles per hour, and I got you, I've got to get you thinking in terms of meters per second. So this is just kind of a reference so that you can kind of begin to see what you've got. So your car, let's say you're going 70 miles per hour. It's 112 kilometers per hour, which is about 30 meters per second. So the beauty of physics answers is that a lot of times you can look at them and go, wow, does this make sense? Okay. So if you're calculating the velocity of a corgi running across your yard and you get a velocity of say 80 meters per second, <laughs> probably not, okay? Especially if you've seen corgis. The genetically they got screwed because I've got legs about this long, okay? There's no way a corgi, unless it's strapped to a rocket, is going to move at 80 meters per second, okay? It's not going to happen. 10 meters per second, maybe, 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 but even then, probably not. Now, speed of sound, 330 meters per second. Most things don't travel faster than the speed of sound. Maybe bullets, okay? Satellites will. So if you're under a normal circumstance, and let's say you're finding the velocity of a car as it goes down like a highway, 
and you get a velocity of say 500 meters per second? No! Okay? The car is not going to break the sound barrier and going, going like Mach 2. Okay? So if you, it should be cool, don't get me wrong. But if you ever get a velocity faster than the speed of sound, step back and go, wow, is that a possibility? Okay? Now, here's the ultimate speed limit, the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you ever, ever get an answer faster than this, you have violated every tenet of physics that exists. Okay? Even if you approach this, okay, unless it's an electron and like a particle accelerator, you're not going to get an answer even approaching this. Okay? No. Typically, like even satellites are like 10 to the third meters per second. Okay? So if you ever, ever, ever get a velocity faster than this, stop. Now, every year I gave this speech. Every year, someone gives me an answer faster than the speed of light. Okay? And again, you all sit there and go, Mr. Burkamp, we won't do that. You know why? Okay? <laughs> Mark my word. Best answer I ever got, and you all would do this calculation, is how long it takes for the command module to orbit the moon. Okay? I have literally got, and I did the conversion. I have gotten answers longer than the universe itself has existed. <laughs> like it was like 10 to the 14th seconds. Okay? And if you work backwards, literally, the universe itself has not existed that long. Okay? And again, you all sit there and go, we won't do that. Whatever. Okay. So uh, we kind of got this as kind of a reference, right? So we have some idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to lay out 10 meters, and we're going to have flash max run those 10 meters. And then we're going to time it, okay? So we're going to have Shively and McGriddle timing them, okay? The timing twins of Shively and McGriddle. And we're going to time them, and we're going to see how fast max runs in comparison to these numbers. Okay, so quick road trip out in the hall. So let's go. So stop that. So we're going to have Mad Max run from the length of the 10 meters. Now, I want you at full speed. Okay, so you, you move one side or the other. I don't care which direction that you run. Okay, and I want you at full speed during this. Because that, because if he starts from rest, and he's speeding up, that's not what I want. I want him at full speed. You need to stretch, I don't want you to pull a hammy or anything. A you're good? Okay. Now, so give me some room here, give me some room. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready. No pressure. Get a running start. We're not watching. Ooh, look at that form. Wow, it's a vacuum, I can't breathe. What'd you get? Second point two two. Uh, I don't know. A second. <laughs> <laughs> one point three seven. Okay. One point three two. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Pretty close, right? Okay. Yeah, we really nice. Okay. I run another one. Huh? I'm running another one. We gotta keep doing that. Yeah. Tell what? Killing zombies. Show me what the best. What the best like information we can get. He wasn't working Yeah, dude, well. three trials. No, 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 He's in jeans. Shit. Put him in some spandex. <laughs> hey, do we really want to see him in spandex? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I, mean, I just had lunch. I want no part of that. Okay? Even if I haven't had lunch, I still want no part of that. Now, do you think this is how they do the timing at the Olympics? No. Definitely yeah, not. Why? Because it's not... Precise. Why? Human error. Because human human error. error. Why is there human error? Because well, what could, what could possibly go wrong with this setup? He's not wearing spandex. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the spandex. Well, I mean, the timers are down here, and they yep. know exactly when he. Yeah, they can't see. Oh, it. okay. You you guys kind of had to guess when he crossed that plane, right? Mm -hmm. Now you were pretty solid on the stopping it, right? Uh -huh. But you kind of had to guess when he started. Okay. Now. Do you think we're pretty pretty okay as far as the length goes? Now, 10 meters, we've got the tape stretched out. We're good there. So where do you think the source of error is going to come? 
time. time. Now, do you think we could write our velocity? Because at the end of the day, we're going to take 10 meters and we're going to divide it by this time. So we've got, eh, okay data. So how, what kind of answer could we calculate? Okay. Yeah. Eh, okay an answer, right? Because we don't have like lasers and everything else set up across here. We got eh data, so we can get, at best get an eh answer. Okay? Got it? Good? Back we go. Now remember those numbers, okay? Got it. Okay. Back in the right. So we had Max running. It even like a little flare. Woo. Okay. And we ran the 10 meters. What were the two times? Uh, 1.32. 1.32 and 1.37. 1.37. Okay. So invariably, what are you going to do with the times? Uh, average them, right? That's the great way out. You average it, right? Okay. Now, sometimes that's handy. Sometimes it's not, because sometimes like if this had been like 1.32 and that had been like, you know, 2.6, don't average them. One, if, you know, if they're far off, somebody was wrong, okay? And averaging will not necessarily balance things out. Okay, but these are pretty close together. So somebody find me the average of these two numbers. It's 1.345. Now, do you think I want to write my average as 1.345 seconds? No. No, why? Because it's more precise than the first minute. Yeah. The only, my data only goes out to the hundredths. Guess what? My average can only go out to the hundredths. Keep that in mind when you're writing up your lab. Okay? If your measurements are only good to like the tenths, your average can only be good to the tenths. Okay? So let's call this 1.35 seconds. So how can we find the velocity O max? 10 meters. I like the paper clip. That was stinging. <laughs> 10 meters over uh, 1.35 seconds. So, your little, little equation action, you're going to take the distance and you're going to divide that by the time. True? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let me, somebody tell me what the oracle says as far as this answer. Divided by 1.35 seconds. What does your oracle say the answer is? 7.4. 7. 7. point what? Point four, four with zero, a lot seven, of numbers four, zero, zero, seven, four, zero, seven. Okay, da, 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 da. Now, here's the problem. If you write all of this, if you write this is the velocity, and this is all you see, what are you going to think? Well, it's really precise. Yeah, you have some phenomenal data. We have lasers at each end tied into a GPS military-grade system, okay? We had a tracking device on Sam, so that we knew, or Max, so we knew exactly, <laughs> sorry, so we knew exactly when he broke the barrier, and then, you know, another one down on the end. This was cool. No! We laid out a tape, we had the timing twins kind of going, <laughs> what was the time? A second? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right to me. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. So, here's the deal. But if you, if you see this, it makes it look like you have great data. We didn't. So what can we do with this? What can we put? What, how's, how, what's, how far out can we go with this? Yeah, so we've got maybe 7.41 seconds. <coughs> this has three significant digits. This has three significant digits. My velocity has three significant digits. Cool with this. So, so if you do this, it's, it's, it's not right because you're, you're saying that you have phenomenal data and we don't. Good with that idea. Now, let's apply this idea to a little bit larger scale. So let's say here's the Earth, and this is not to scale, and there's Mars, and the distance at closest approach between Earth and Mars is, a number that I do not have memorized, it's 5.567 5, times 10 to the 10th meters. Okay, so everybody says, oh, hey, let's colonize Mars. It's a great idea, okay? We'll send people to Mars. They've made, they've made movies about it, and it's cool, right? Okay? So, but there's some logistical problems that happen with this. So let's say here's the Earth, here's Mars, and this is as close as Mars ever gets to the Earth. Okay, this is like a Best case scenario, this is as close as it's going to get. This is 10 to the 10th. To give you some perspective, 
the moon that orbits us has an orbital radius of like 10 to the 8th, okay? So this is well beyond the distance to the moon. So let's say that I want to send a radio signal from Earth to Mars. So your significant other is on Mars, okay? And at noon, let's say, you pick up the phone and you say, hey, what's happening, right? So we're going to send this radio signal that says, hey, what's happening at noon from the Earth and we're going to get it out here to Mars. Now, all forms of electromagnetic radiation, visible light, microwaves, visible, or x-rays, doesn't make any difference. They all travel at the speed of light times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So, here's the deal. I want to figure out how long it's going to take for that radio signal to get from Earth to Mars. Now, to give you some perspective on how fast that is, of that speed of light. Imagine that you have the Earth and your uh, and Albert Einstein is standing here. Okay, one of my sisters got me this for Christmas. And so <laughs> Al, Al is standing here in Nairobi, Kenya, and he's going to turn on a flashlight, and that beam of light is going to travel at the speed of light. Oddly enough. Now, instead of going straight, this is the magic Albert Einstein flashlight, and that beam of light is going to travel in a perfect circumference all the way around the Earth. Okay? So instead of going straight, it's actually going to curve and follow the surface. It's going to take, okay, if you sit there and you start to count how many times this beam of light is going to pass you per second, it's about seven times. So this beam of light, when you turn it on, is going to go all the way around the Earth and come back to you about seven times per second. So you can't even count to seven in one second. Okay? If you try and count to seven, what are they for six seven? Okay? That's about a second and a half. All right? you, so imagine that you're standing here and you're seeing this beam of light go around you seven times and it is going all the way around the Earth. That's how fast this flight. Whatever. <laughs> Don't know. Okay, well. Right. All right. So, I want to know how long it's going to take for that signal to get there. So what can I do? Start, start with what, what do we do with, with Mad Max? What equation did we use? We started with velocity equaling what? Distance over time. Do we know the velocity? Yes. yes. What do we not know? Time. So here's my question. How can I get time by itself? Mr. Stanley, how can I get time by itself? Multiply times over. Beautiful. Keep going. Then divide by the velocity. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to multiply by time. I'm going to divide back by V. So time is going to equal distance divided by velocity. What units should I end up in? Seconds. 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 Now, let's do some dimensional analysis. On Friday, if you do not do dimensional analysis, by the time you hand in that test, you have done something horribly wrong. Okay, so what, what units is our distance going to be in? Meters. Meters. So I'm going to take meters and divide that by? Meters per, meters per second. Instead of dividing by meters per second, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So then I would have meters times seconds over meters. Mir meters cancel out. Miracle of miracles, I get seconds. seconds. Okay, cool. All right. So to get this time, I'm going to take my distance, 5.567 times 10 to the 10th meters. I'm going to divide that by the speed of light which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now, is my answer going to be bigger or smaller than one second? I hope bigger. I hope bigger. Why? Wait, no. Oh, wait, no. Oh. <laughs> yes. yes. Why? Because the distance itself is longer. To, to Mars is longer than the speed of light. Okay, so yeah. Because if the speed of light traveled for one second, how far would it go? Three times 10 to the 8th meters, right? So since this distance is bigger than that, I know it's going to take more than a second. Also, 
Just look at what we talked about this yesterday, this order of magnitude. If I take 10 to the 10th and divide it by 10 to the 8th, I get what? 10 to the 2nd. Second. 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 Ballpark. It's going to be something around 10 to the 2nd. Ballpark. So I know my answer has to be more, more than 1 second. So somebody take a calculator, do the magic math, and let me know what happens. 185.5666. So we'll call it 186 seconds, okay? Because this has three significant digits. Right? Now, divide that by 60 so we get another perspective. 3.0927778. Okay? So that's about <coughs> three minutes. Okay? So here's the significance of this. Communication with your significant other in Mars is going to be complicated. <coughs> because even if you send a text message, which is also going to travel at the speed of light, you send a text message, how are you? Okay? It's going to take three minutes for that signal to get from the Earth to Mars. Then they're going to get that signal, respond back. It's going to take another three minutes to get that signal to return. So you're talking like six minutes. Now, some of you, I know this happens, get really, really upset. Like if you send a text message and somebody doesn't respond right away, it's like, oh my God, they hate me. Oh, what did I do? God, they're not responding. Oh, careful. Okay? Okay, texting drama. I'm, you may not have experienced it, but you know people that do. Okay? So... If your significant other is on Mars, hey, deal with it, okay? And this is when it's as close as you can possibly get. <coughs> now, this is where it's going to get really bad. Is that let's say at some point, here's this big star that we're orbiting, and here's the Earth, okay? At some point, Mars is going to end up over here. Now, why is communication going to be impossible? Sun's the, sun's the sun's in the way, okay? You're, you try and send a radio signal, guess what? It's not going to get through. Okay? So there will be times in this orbit where we will, not, we will not even be able to communicate with Mars because the sun's in the way. Now, even if it's over here, instead of taking three minutes, that might take like eight minutes to get there because of that. Now you're way over here on opposite sides of this orbit. So everybody says, oh, let's colonize Mars. There's a whole bunch of things that are going to make this horribly, horribly complicated. One being just communication. Okay? It isn't like, oh, we'll just you know, call and say, hi, honey, how are you? And if you're used to like a real-time conversation, it's not going to happen. Yes? So if you did make a phone call from Earth to Mars, how would that play out? What do you mean? You would say, hi. You, you, you'd send the signal that says, literally, at noon, you say, hey, how you doing? And then... You're not going to get your response, best case scenario, until like six after. You could put on the phone. Yeah, yeah. You just you could put the phone down and go, you know, go make you know your lunch or whatever, because you're not going to hear back for six minutes. And then you're going to they're going to get their response. They're going to say, "Hi, how are you? What's happening today at physics?" And you're like, "Hey, we talked about Mars and the speed of light." And you're going to send that signal, and then six minutes later they're going to come back and say, "Wow, that's cool." And so it's just going to be like it would be like me speaking. I would say, hey, how are you doing? And then I'm going to walk out of the room, and I don't have to be back until six minutes because I know it's going to take three minutes for that signal to get to you, for you to hear it, and then three, three minutes for that signal to get back to me. It'd be kind of weird. Okay. Yeah, that's how it would play out. Okay. Cool with this. All right. Now, let's talk circles. So let's say I'm going to take yonder rubber stopper that I happen to have, and I'm going to swing it around in a circle. I want to figure out how fast that rubber stopper is moving as it moves around in this circle. So, Fonda, what's one thing that I can measure? Distance. Which distance? There's a whole bunch of distances I can measure. Uh, from one end to the other end. Uh, from the stop <laughs> one end to the other end. <laughs> the radius. Okay. The radius. Is that what you mean by one end to the, from my, like my hand out to the rubber stopper? Okay. Otherwise known as the radius. Okay. So, <laughs> one end to the other. Okay. Okay. So I can measure the radius. Okay. All right. Cool. What can I do with the radius? I could, but I don't want to. Why not? Also, oh, oh, you'll well, see. I know it's pi is involved. Why is pi involved? Because it's the magic number. That's the magic number. Okay. That's how you pi find, is the magic number. That's how you find circumference. You think it's pi squared? I think so. I don't know. Why pi yeah. squared? Because that really circle. makes it magic? No. <laughs> if you square pi, it's like, whoo! 
squirt pie. It's like two times as magic. Right, yeah. Wait, we could. Whoa, wait, wait, whoa, wait, whoa. Squirt oh. the radius. Yeah, I can square the radius. No. That's what it is. Yeah. Wait, pie, 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 you can, you can pie R squared. I'm not. No, pi R round. You can but find. I don't want to find <laughs> pi R squared. And here's the reason why. Okay. okay. That's the look, at this. Look, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm trying to figure out how fast this rubber stopper is moving, right? So at the end of the day, what units do I want? to be in. So meters, per second. meters per second. Meters per second. So right away, if I square the radius, right away what happens to the to my units? It becomes meters squared. Right? If I square that radius, if I do pi r squared, now I'm stuck with meters squared, which isn't what velocity is going to be measured in. So that's why I don't want to square that radius, because now my units are all jacked up. Okay? So how can I combine Actually, I want to use the number two, and I want to use pi, and I want to find this distance all the way around here. Two pi r, otherwise known as the circumference. <laughs> okay? So the circumference of any circle is two pi r. Okay. Right? Or pi d. I like two pi r. I'm old. Right? So two pi r. So if I find the circumference, okay, at the end of the day, I want to do this. I want to take distance and divide it by time. Just like when Max was running, we figured out how far he ran, and we divided it by how long it took. But since we're moving in a circle, it's not a linear distance. I've got to find the circumference of the circle. Oh, that's kind of cool, right? So instead of D, I'm going to put 2 pi r. Oh, that's kind of cool, right? Now, we need to introduce a new variable. And that's uppercase T. Now, here's the difference. Lowercase t is just time. Like when Max was running, it was the time to go in between two points. If you have uppercase t, that's what we refer to as period. That's the time it takes for some event to come back to that point in its orbit. So if we go out and we have Max run in a circle, and he would come back to that same point, we would use uppercase t. In this case, we're talking about that rubber stopper starting here and coming back to that point. So if I were doing this, I'd have the timing twins going around. Okay, going, okay, time how long? This out of curiosity. Let's do this. Whoa, that was close. Okay. Took an eye out. Okay, <coughs> physics teacher loses his eye by rubber stopper. Okay, so get an idea of, of how long it's going to take. I love shy from these eyes. <laughs> Let's go back and forth. It's like, it's like he's trying to pass a DUI test. Okay? <laughs> Sorry for it. Okay, what? What'd you get? Nine six. Point what? Nine six. 0.96, little, about a second. Yeah. Okay? So that was taking about a second to go around. So if I could measure that radius, then I could figure out that circumference. So why don't you think I want to measure the circumference just by itself? Why, do you, why would it be difficult to measure the circumference? Physically, why would that be tough to do? It's always, it's it's always moving. moving. It's always moving. <laughs> <laughs> It isn't like I can take a tape and wrap it around in a circle, right? You could, but not awful difficult. Let's just measure the radius, multiply it by 2 pi, which is the magic number, okay? Ah, score for the home team. So, here's the deal. This is the same idea as this. It's a distance divided by a time. And so, you, took, you said it took about one second for it to come back to that point. I can measure the circumference, I'm going to divide that up. Ah, that's kind of cool. Okay, now. We can play that out large. This is what you can do on your sun. Here's the sun, here's the Earth. Earth orbits around the sun. That's kind of cool, right? So, if I gave you the radius, which I'm going to, what could you find? If I could find the circumference. Oh, so if I want to calculate the velocity of the Earth, which you're going to, I'm going to take that circumference, right? And then I'm going to divide that by how long it takes for the Earth to go around this star that we have, okay? So, how long does it take for us to go around our star? A year otherwise known as? 365 days. Yeah, so that's 365 <laughs> days. Now, let's say that here's Al, right, on the spinning rock that we have, okay? And Al's going around like this, okay? Now, how long does it take Al to get from this point all the way back around to this point, just in terms of the spinning rock? 
24 hours, all right, one day. So, is Al going to travel the circumference of the earth? Yes. Yeah, because he's going to start here, right? And it's going to go all the way around back to this point. So, we're going to do that same calculation, only using the circumference of the earth and 24 hours. And then we can figure out how fast he's got to move to get back to that same point. Okay, stop that. Let me hand out the assignment.